I'm actually going to describe the University of Florida and <clears throat> NPI experience as uh, I was first at the University of Florida for three years before coming to Boston. So we're going to talk about how we modified lymphos slightly in terms of the dye we use, and I'll explain why we did that. I'll describe our early results, and then I'll end with our animal model, which we developed uh, just a few floors uh, below this auditorium. So at this point, lympha needs no introduction. Um, it was late 2014. I had just built a chronic lymphedema program, surgical program, uh, down in Florida with an, um, an amazing team. <clears throat> and I noticed that these patients were suffering with their disease for three to four years um, before they, I ever got to them. And I said, there's got to be something we can do to prevent this disease. And um, I went into the literature, and I found these guys. And I said, all right, this is what we're going to do. It makes perfect sense. And so I took it to my breast surgeons, and there was a reluctance because they, um, they did not want me injecting blue dye into the arm because the, the way uh, lymph node dissections were done in Florida was they would do a sentinel node uh, identification on the table. If it was positive, they would convert to an axillary node dissection. So they needed that blue dye in the breast, and they believed in doing dual tracers into the breast. So they wanted me to find another dye for the arm. And there was actually very good data in the, in the breast literature for using a dual tracer method, especially if a patient got neoadjuvant chemo, which was becoming more popular uh, in the US. So what other dye can we use? The natural response would be to use ICG. Uh, and uh, we've heard a lot about ICG during this conference. And one of the things you'll notice about ICG is when pictures of ICG are shown, you're looking at a black screen and a white light. And you actually can't see that through the microscope. You actually have to look up and look at another screen. And it can be very disorienting. So one of the other hats I wear is I'm a head and neck reconstructive surgeon. And one day I was in the OR with one of the spine surgeons. And I saw this. And they were removing a spinal meningioma. And they had lit it up with fluorescein. And right away, I saw the benefits of this. Because you could see the rest of the tissue looked fairly natural. And I thought, we should use this for lympha. And, and the main advantage was you could do live surgery. So you could visualize what you're trying to go after um, without losing the rest of the field. The big disadvantage was that you needed a microscope equipped with this filter, and most neurosurgeons uh, happen to have it. So we had it in Florida, so I translated it over to the lympho procedure. <clears throat> I would inject the yellow dye into the ipsilateral arm before the dissection, and then I would find the channel, just like Dr. Bacardo and Dr. Feldman described, and bypass it into the vein. If we can load the video, this is a video showing um, what we actually do in the operating room. So you, as you can see, before the axillary section starts, we inject the fluorescein in the upper inner arm. You're looking in the axilla now. Those are your lymph nodes. The arm is coming off over here. And when you turn on the filter, you can actually see the lymphatic channels coming right out of the arm, going to the lymph nodes. You come out, you let the breast surgeon do their dissection. And you can see the channels that were cut coming out of the arm. You can see the active leak coming out of those channels. You can isolate those channels, operate in real time with the channels visualized. Put them into your vein. Secure the vein to the perilymphatic tissue. And then go back on your filter. And you have dye going up to your clamp. And one hour later, because I was doing a brush reconstruction at the same time, you come back, and the entire vein is now full. And you can see that's where we made the connection. Axillary veins up here. And there's a little fat here, which is why you don't see the dye. But the dye is filling the entire vein. And so we uh, described the use of fluorescein for lympha. 
Uh, in our very early experience, we had 14 patients. We aborted on one in 13 patients. Uh, our demographics were actually very similar to the Columbia group. Uh, intraoperatively, we bypassed 1.7 channels and um, we identified 3.4, but most significantly, we, we just showed this is safe uh, as a, a way of imaging lymphatic channels. Our early results are, are from the University of Florida as well, where we, <coughs> we developed a surveillance model in 2014. So every new breast cancer patient underwent a baseline lymphedema evaluation, standard of care surgery, followed by a post-operative lymphedema evaluation. And every evaluation uh, included a, being seen by a certified lymphedema therapist, circumferential measurements, and bioimpedance. And we did a retrospective review of this protocol over two years. And what was very uh, unique about this uh, cohort is in the first year, we did not offer lympha because we weren't there yet. And the second year, we did. And these are our results. They were actually just published in the Journal of Surgical Research. These are the demographics. Of, uh, we had 87 patients, average age of 60, BMI 30, 40% underwent mastectomy, 21% axillary node dissection, and 24% regional lymph node radiation. The incidence of lymphedema uh, was statistically significant in the axillary lymph node dissection group, mastectomy group, regional lymph node radiation group, and adjuvant chemo. This is a breakdown of our patients, and I would just uh, bring your attention to this group, which is our axillary lymph node dissection group. This is the first year where we did an offer of lympha. In 10 patients, 40% developed lymphedema. And in the other group, uh, eight patients, we only had one patient develop lymphedema. And when we compared our lympha and non-lympha groups, uh, the only thing we noted was a change in follow a difference in follow-up, and that made sense because we didn't offer lympha until the second year. This is a Kaplan-Meier estimate curve, which will show that over about three years, uh, your risk of getting uh, not getting lympha, uh, not getting lymphedema, is about 90% after lympha, versus about 35% uh, without lympha. The biggest limitation of our study was we had a small sample size. And so we, to try to offset that, we went back and looked at our, looked at our patients that were lost to follow up. And the only thing we noted was a little difference in age uh, between our axillary node dissections that received lympha and did not. And finally, I'll end with an animal model that we've developed. Lympha is awesome, but it, it, we need to better understand how it responds to radiation, chemotherapy, and find ways to make it better. So we just had this receptive for publication where um, I went into Dr. Bernie Lee's already running molecular imaging lab soon after I showed up here. And we took four pigs. And essentially, this is what we did. Uh, we did nothing. We did nothing on one groin. And we uh, did a lymphadenectomy on the other. We did a sham operation here, an incision and close, and then a lymphadenectomy, and then a lymphadenectomy and an immediate bypass. And what we did was we injected two different dyes. Um, we cannulated the lymphatics in each hind limb, and we injected a blue dye and a green dye. And under fluorescence imaging, you can see what it looks like. And then what we did is we put a central line in, in, in the pig and we drew off blood at various time points, and we put that blood through a spectrometer to see how much of the dye got to the central system. And these are baseline curves of your green dye and your blue, blue dye. And then what we did is we went and we did the lymphadenectomy, and you can see this was the control, and here you lost 68% of your clearance after your lymphadenectomy. And this is what happens if you do an LV bypass at the same time. This is your control. After the bypass, you get rapid clearance into the system, and then it plateaus. And it's only a 21% uh, drop in your lymphatic clearance. And we use molecular imaging to prove that our anastomosis was intact. 
So in conclusion, we believe uh, FITSI is safe and effective in lymphatic imaging. Uh, early results of lympha are promising, and I think there's an opportunity for further animal studies to better elucidate this promising technique. Thank you.